So, so I know that I had said originally that we would we would make some sort of video in one way, shape, or form talking about the, the mini mullet setup that is on the felt right now, but excitement is kind of overbearing that idea, along with the fact that the tire that I bought on it got a small cut in the sidewall. There's a tube in there now. That upsets me. I don't want to deal with it. I think it's very fixable, but I don't want to deal with it. And uh, I kind of want to, I kind of want to set these up. I want to see how these turn out. These are the Hunt Trail Wide 27 and a half, uh, 30 millimeter wide. I was kind of, I was kind of on the fence of what I wanted to do wheel wise for that bike for the winter and the upcoming season. And I had found myself going through like a couple different websites looking to build a rear wheel and kind of gain a front wheel that maybe was already built. The, the annoying part of this bike is it's got a boost front hub and a non-boost rear triangle. So that was kind of why I was looking at like building a set of wheels instead of buying them. And of course, when you look at enough stuff on the internet, advertisements start to show up on your Instagram feed a little bit. These came up with a price of, I think it's like 499 or like 450 bucks or something like that. American on the Hunt website. So I went and looked knowing that it's like, uh, it's probably gonna come boost only and I'm not gonna be able to have the mix and match. Lo and behold, you can mix and match. And the guys at Hunt are really, really good about it. So we've got a 12 by 142 non-boost through axle rear wheel and a boost front wheel. Me not having to build anything and saving a ton of money instead of building something myself. Building something myself with like a set of stands or, or whatever was gonna be anywhere from like 800 to $1,000 out of the gate. These with fantastic reviews, uh, 600 bucks, like to the door. I think I paid like an extra 50 for duty. Along with a new X-Fusion O2 shock with a lockout and a rebound dial that actually works. So I'm just gonna kind of like swap everything over, get this bike ready, get Angela's bike back together. And uh, my friend Dan, who you know on the channel, he's gonna be here. We're gonna set up his Vitus tubeless. And then we're actually gonna go ride a little bit. I'll get to try out these wheels, the new shocks, see if the bike is any better. So I'd be lying, I think a little bit, if I said I wasn't somewhat concerned about the width of tire that I bought to go on the rear of this 26 inch on mountain bike going up to a 27 and a half. But keep in mind, we did have the 27 and a half by 2.35 from the Poseidon on there. No issues rubbing wise. I can't imagine 0 0.05 of an inch being a big deal. And then the next question is, do you line up the yellow Maxis or do you line up, do you line up the tire logo? There you go. Okay, not quite done, but Dan is here, Vitus, is going tubeless. Oh, you still don't have a chain. The tubeless on this thing is going to be the easy part. The problem that we're having with it is the headset and fork area is, uh, well, it's got some phantom noises that created from Dan casing on the jumps and churro and literally exploding the aluminum cup inside the frame. Like this, this black piece here, the actual headset cup blew up into a bunch of pieces and fell out when Dan took the fork out of the bike. And since that has happened, and apparently this is pretty common with these uh, Mazaroki bomber forks, uh, there's a creek inside this steer tube. What else? Oh, chain broke. We were riding dirt jumps last weekend and going up into the, the roll down section. The chain broke off. I wonder if it is a SRAM chain that comes on it. It is. Mm. Or it was. Mm. Anyway, tubeless, tubeless setup go good. Yeah, I celebrated being done work. Hey, look at that. It truly has tape on it. This is actually gonna be easy. So just cut that valve out of there. 
Don't you have any valves that I, these tubes are so good. <laughs> well, I'm sure we can use one of these. Actually, this tube that's already cut, that's, a good that's got a good valve in it. I do it all the time. Is it, how reliable is it? So everybody who's just buying valve, valve stems, yes. to go tubeless are just wasting their money or? No, yeah. I don't know, what makes you feel better about doing this? <laughs> I'm trusting you. <laughs> Line up the logo with the valve and make sure it's going on in the correct direction. That's some, that's some weenie stuff to line the logo up. Well, well we're here, why wouldn't you do it? But I'll do it. <laughs> I think it's on backwards. <laughs> okay, fix it. Keep going. All the way. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Check to make sure that the bead is popped on everywhere. You can hear all the uh, the old holes. All that line is there. It looks the same. You're good. So just shake it because you've got a couple holes that it just needs to fill. Shake it or run. All right, so Dan's bike is all geared up. He had to go. He's on his way to ride trails and PEI. So I'm on my own again. But this thing is ready to go. Let's go. So I very, very purposely chose this trail because I'm quite familiar with it. I've ridden it on this bike a lot and there's countless, countless rides that I've done in here on my cross country bikes. So while it is completely far from like the rowdiest, hardest, like big jumpy trail that we have around here, it is full of roots and it is full of like quick hit stuff that really gets suspension working. And lately that has kind of been the thing that has been the most interesting to me in the mountain bike tech world. This is all still fairly new to me, but I am enjoying learning. an easy jeans ride. There's a bunch of like really kind of obvious trail obstructions put in place in here. Something tells me someone or something doesn't want us in here anymore. Like back there, there used to be a bridge. It's gone now. So in an effort to not upset anybody, I think we're gonna go. Impression? 10 out of 10 will definitely ride my bicycle again. For sure, absolutely. But in all seriousness, this experiment of, of like modernizing and up wheel sizing this 2013 trail bike has proved to basically just bring it, you know, back to feeling like new again, which has given me 
a new kind of baseline to tune from. But uh, really, ultimately, what the plan here is, is that I just keep kind of picking away at parts. Now I've got wheels, I've got a fork, I've got a new shock, um, I've got the dropper post, drivetrain, you know, I've got a, a good number of decent bike parts that could easily transfer from this frame to something that maybe I designed myself with Merino steel full suspension bicycles and, uh, and the transfer could go pretty seamlessly. And if that wasn't obvious, that is what we're gonna do probably next riding season. I'll ride the aluminum frame that I have here for the next winter season um, and each YouTube pay or Patreon pay from the support that you guys give on here or from each Amazon pay or from like merch pays, I'll set a, a salt and peppered amount aside from each sale or each level of support and, and eventually order that. But for now, a bike that doesn't have a pogo stick of a rear shock trying to throw me forward into the depths of spiky burnt hell is, uh, is a real win. So with all that said, what do you want to do tomorrow? Tuna, tuna, tuna.